What's up? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be transforming my model who has grown out highlights and I'm going to be combining three of my favorite techniques on her head. I've never done this before, but I'm really excited. So let's get started. never combined these specific three techniques before but she's got some grown out highlights but then she also has a lot of depth underneath that we have to break through so I'm gonna be combining my foliage technique my baby lights technique with a root shadow and I'm gonna be throwing extra one more thing in there so I'm excited for you guys to see how we transform this hair and really show how you guys can combine these different techniques to get the look that you want so let's go mix up all right, so this is what we're starting with. You guys can see she's got kind of these grown out highlights and then she's got a lot of depth here underneath and in the back. So what we're gonna be doing is brightening up a lot of this stuff, bringing in a balayage look, getting rid of the highlights look and really getting rid of this line of demarcation that is so strong throughout her highlights. So we're gonna be doing all of that fun stuff and this is gonna be a really great transformation and I'm excited to show you guys how I transform clients that have grown out highlights into a balayage look to give them something a little bit more lower maintenance. All right, so on her, I'm actually gonna be comboing two different techniques. So this video will be fun because I'm gonna be showing you guys two of my techniques and uh, melting them together. So I'm starting out with Blondor and I'm gonna be doing uh, 25 volume to start out. And a lot of you guys have asked, how do you make 25 volume? So simply all you do is you mix 20 volume with 30 volume equal parts with your lightener and that's how you get 25 volume. Um, now, obviously there are like very scientific ways that you should go about making sure to measure and things like that for some of you guys that love to measure your lightener i don't usually measure i just kind of eyeball it um some people say that's wrong it has always worked out well for me so i go off consistency not necessarily measuring but yes of course to get a true 25 volume read you should measure out your developer or weigh it out something like that um, again, I've been doing this for a while. It works for me, but do what works best for you. And uh, I don't want to hear any hater comments about it. But um, for me, I go off consistency. So one of the things that I like to have it um, just kind of lightly, um, a little bit more liquidy, but nothing too thick or too thin. So to me, this is actually a really good consistency. And then I'm also going to add in a little bit of Olaplex. Um, now, another question that I get a lot of times with Olaplex is if you actually do a eighth of an ounce, which is what is recommended per scoop of bleach or per scoop of lightener. You should do an eighth of an ounce. But if you did that, that would actually affect the way that your developer um, works. So I would have to actually do 35 volume because you have to bump it up by 10 volume. So if any of this is confusing for you, go check out Olaplex's directions. So if you do an eighth of an ounce, their recommended um, amount, then it's actually going to make you adjust your developer. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to do a 16th of an ounce per scoop. And I did a little bit more than a scoop so I'll do a little bit more than that and I'm just gonna add that in and when I add in just a sixteenth of an ounce it actually doesn't affect uh, my developer so I don't have to bump up my developer but again if you have any questions about this make sure to go ask Olaplex check them out they can give you all the answers over there that's just again what works for me and what I've learned over the years so this is our lightener we're gonna start out with some balayage foliage pieces underneath then we're gonna switch to foil so we're gonna start with our 25 volume on the bottom and because we're doing some foliage pieces on her, I am going to be using a blending agent. Now, I've referred to this in a couple other of my videos, but today I'm going to be using the Biolage Raw Color Care Acidic Milk Rinse as my blending agent. In previous videos, I've used a lightweight conditioner, but now I've actually switched to the Biolage Raw Color Care Acidic Milk Rinse. So we're going to add this into a bowl, and this is going to be our blending agent, and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about, but I love, love, love using this for our blending agent versus a lightweight conditioner. Um, this is a product that I use use all the time on the back end and we'll show you how we use it there but this is a really great blending agent and so yeah let's get started all right so the way that I decided I'm gonna tackle her hair I told you guys I'm gonna be doing two different techniques so because she only has regrowth of about two three inches up here if she had a little bit more I would go in with my foliage technique but because she doesn't have that much regrowth what I decided I'm going to do is in this underneath section where she's really dark, I'm gonna go through and do my foliage technique just to brighten her up and bring up some lightness up into here, give her that balayage look underneath, and then through the top where she already has her highlights, we're gonna go through and do some spaced out baby lights, 
Then we're gonna drive her natural color down in between those foils to kind of recreate that balayage look and really get rid of this line of demarcation, this strong one that she has here. And then at the end of the bowl, we're gonna do a little baby shadow just to kind of diffuse those highlights. So I'm super stoked to get her this look. And I am gonna be doing my baby lights way more spaced out um, just to kind of break up this line of demarcation, but we don't wanna go crazy, crazy blonde here on the top. So that's kind of the technique that I'm gonna be doing, but I'll show you guys throughout the process. All right, so what I did was I sectioned her hair from the front to the back, and then I just kind of took a section and sectioned out this top area. Now she does have some of these highlights down in here, but we are gonna be raising up her balayage like up in here a little bit, so I'm okay with this kind of being our bottom section. So we're gonna take our first section in the way that I normally do my foliage, kind of a diagonal back section around her hairline. And you guys can see she does have some lightness in here towards the end, but I wanna bring it up in here too. So we'll clip this area away. And what I'm gonna do, she's got really stick straight, fine, soft hair, like I do. So what's gonna happen with her hair is I'm gonna weave it out, but then I'm also gonna tease. And you wanna make sure with clients like this, you're using a really fine tooth comb, and you're kinda gonna start down here at the base and kinda tease your way up. If you just kinda tease up into the root, um, chances are her hair is gonna be too soft and it's actually not gonna tease well. So I usually start a little bit lower down here to make sure that I'm getting that good area teased up nice and high. So then I'm gonna take a foil and I'm gonna start with a smaller foil here. And I'm going to take my blending agent, that Biolage Raw Acidic Milk Rinse, and just kind of tap it in here, kind of close to the root area. And then we're gonna blend in our lightener up into that uh, blending agent. Now, because she has highlights, she's gonna have some pieces that are like more low lights and stuff. So I'm going to be kind of grabbing these pieces and just adding them back up into here so that we're making sure that we're actually getting those pieces and she doesn't have like spottiness. Um, but we're gonna make sure to be really gentle with the pieces that are already pre-lightened. Um, she is gonna be getting a haircut, but we're not gonna be doing anything crazy like taking off a lot of length. So we do wanna make sure that we're keeping her hair healthy and keeping that integrity in her hair. So all I'm doing is kind of blending the lightener up into that blending agent. Try not to pull out any of that teasing or really uh, mess with that. I'm gonna take another foil, just place this right on top here. And we'll fold up the bottom here just to kind of lock it into place. And we'll do like one little triangle lock right in there. I'm gonna continue doing this. I'm gonna do another like half inch section. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And I'm gonna do probably three diagonal back sections just around her hairline to give her that brightness. And then I'll switch to the other side and do that side there. All right, so I did three diagonal back sections on both sides and now I'm kind of here with our V and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take kind of a smaller section here. Sometimes I would do bigger, sometimes I'll do smaller, but because she has so much depth in here, I really wanna make sure that I'm getting a lot of brightness in here, especially because she's got so much brightness through the top as well. So I'm taking my uh, V section right across here and I'm going to do kind of a weave across this section. And you guys can see she just has a little bit of lightness down here at the bottom, so I'm going to also tease this and this is gonna be kind of our starting foliage piece. Now you guys might have seen earlier in a clip, um, her hair is so soft that the teasing just kind of wants to creep back down. So what I've been doing is I just take a clip and I secure it right there and then just comb through and now I have a clean area to apply my lightener to. So that's a really great um, easy tip to kind of keep your teasing from creeping back down on you, especially for people that have like super soft hair like hers. So I'm applying my uh, blending agent and then going through and applying my lightener. Now again, I'm being really, really careful not to kind of touch the areas that she already had previously lightened, but I definitely want to make sure to get to this darker area. So just being gentle, and again, I do have Olaplex in there, um, and so that will help to just ensure that her hair remains healthy while we're going through this process. So I'm just blending this up in there, and one other thing that I do use is a clean dry brush. I'll go through and I'll just kind of sometimes clean up this section. Um, occasionally if it gets a little messy or something, I'll just go through and do that almost like as an eraser. So then we'll just apply our foil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do another straight across section here because normally I would do a thicker one there, but because she's got so much depth, I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna kind of do another couple diagonal backs and another straight across. So we're just gonna keep working up this section.
All right, so I continued up the head again. I did two straight across sections that I showed you guys, and then I did two more diagonal back sections. And I'm just gonna kind of finish up this little area up in here with some straight across sections. Um, now, one thing that you do wanna be careful of when you're doing straight across is you wanna make sure that you are teasing it really well and weaving it really well. Otherwise, you can cause um, you know, some lines. So if that starts to happen to you, maybe you try out this technique and you're having lines. Usually the issue is either the section was too thick, you didn't weave or you didn't tease enough. But another thing that you can do instead of taking just a straight across section is you could do a diagonal section and that's also, or a diagonal zigzag section. That's going to help you kind of just, uh, eliminate some of that. So for me, I, it's not really an issue that I have, but for those of you guys who have been trying it and maybe are having some troubles there, definitely try that out. So one thing that I noticed as I weaved out this section, just as I was talking here, I noticed that underneath, um, there's this, a lot of depth down here in these ends. So what I'm going to do, she does have some highlights in there. I'm not going to worry about them too, too much because again, we have some Olaplex in there. I'm literally just going to kind of tip out these ends. So I'm just going to kind of really tease this section. You guys can see I got rid of most of that blonde in there and I'm going to just take a foil and just kind of uh, brighten up these ends because they're really dark and again this is just something that I saw as I was talking so I'll get it here on camera um, this happens sometimes especially because this is her grown out highlights you're not going to have that kind of solid end look like a balayage so you will have to kind of go in and add these custom foils in that's why I like this technique because I'm going through the hair seeing it uh, almost panel by panel and being able to see like what needs to happen in there so I'm just adding that in there um, I'll kind of brush this up but this is really, really teased, so I'm not too, too worried about it. So we'll just add that guy right in there. And then now I'm gonna go back up and do this other section that I intended to do. So now we've got our weaved uh, and teased piece. I'll tease it just one more time here. And again, with her hair, this, this needed to happen. These clips needed to happen because it's just so uh, soft and which is a great thing for her, but for me, it makes my job a little bit harder. So again, I'm doing the exact same technique, just adding my blending agent. And again, she has kind of some of this lightness through the ends, just a smidge, but a lot of it, I've been kind of either pulling out just these pieces right here. She's got just a tiny, tiny bit. It's hard to see probably even on camera, but the rest of this, she does have some lightness in there, but there's so much depth in there. I'm just saturating it. I'm not again, too worried about it. Um, if she had a lot of like chunky highlights, I would try to weave it out, but it's just so, so blended in there that this will look orange if I don't fully saturate it. So I'm going to just saturate that and go in there and then we're going to go back up and lighten it out. So, um, and blend it out, I should say. So yeah, there's a lot of like little random tips and tricks in this video. And it's just because it's just things that I'm coming up against in her hair. And hopefully that you guys are finding them helpful. So if you guys are finding these tips, these random tips in the video helpful, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know which one of these random tips you have enjoyed so far. All right, so I'm just going through kind of cleaning up this little area up in here. And we'll add a foil on top and continue up her head. I'll probably do one more straight across just to kind of get rid of this depth in here. And then we're gonna switch over to our second technique for her head. So I've kind of got to the point of her head where her highlights are starting and her roots aren't as much. So I'm gonna start with my baby light sections up here. Um, I put all my foilage pieces in my pink foil so that you guys could see the difference. And now we're gonna go in with just regular um, silver foils. But what I like to do when I'm doing my baby lights is I actually start more at the apex of the head versus down here. So I'm gonna just take this section and I'm gonna unclip our front pieces because we don't need to have them clipped up. And I'm gonna go up to kind of the apex of the head up here and kind of just see where her head kind of narrows out. We'll clip this away up here. This will be part of the front. And if you guys have seen my highlighting videos, you know that I foil backwards. So if you haven't seen those, go check those out, but I'll show you guys here. So I'm gonna take my first section and this is gonna be a baby light. Now again, you guys can see, she's got a lot of lightness through here, but then some natural low lights. So we're gonna be picking out those natural low lights to keep her as blonde as possible. So I'm going to just kind of weave her hair up in here. And then I'm gonna take my foil and I'm going to lock it into place up here. And we're gonna start and I'm gonna foil backwards. So I'm starting with 25. I stayed with the same developer that I had down below. And I'm gonna leave it just a little bit off her roots right now because um, this foil I am gonna kind of come back to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these low light pieces that she still has kind of down in here, 
fold it up into here, and then now tackle these kind of low light pieces up in this foil so that we're making sure to get that dark end without really touching any of her really blonde pieces. This one kind of goes down a little bit lower, so we'll just kind of tackle this guy. And this is honestly how I work through somebody who has highlights but wants to be completely blonde, especially through the ends. You would not want to do lightness here and then leave those low lights. That would just be super weird. So now I'm going to fold my foil just down like this, and I'm going to go on to my next section. Now because of her, she doesn't want to be like insanely blonde. She does want to have that still balayage look. I am leaving out a little bit more hair than I would with a traditional baby light doing just smidgy bit more hair. So now I'm gonna just keep going down through her hair and I'm not doing like super fine baby lights. I am going in a little bit heavier than a regular baby light. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go down through her hair. We're gonna work our way down till we meet to this foil section and then I'm going to spin her around and we're gonna work forward up the mohawk. All right, so I got to where my foilage meets my highlights. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to just kind of fold these foils back up. Again, if you've watched my other highlighting videos, I go a little bit more into depth here. So I'm gonna fold these guys up and then we're gonna spin her around and we're going to get to the uh, front of her hair. So now we've gotten to kind of the top of her head and because I foil backwards, I actually stand in front of my client and foil this way versus a traditional way where you would foil down. So I'm going to keep doing the same thing as what I did before. I am leaving a little bit um, less hair out than I was before, I guess. In the back, I left a little bit more spacing, like quarter of an inch, a little bit more. This time I'm leaving anywhere from like a quarter to an eighth of an inch out in between foils just because um, she is blonder up in here, so we definitely want to make sure that we're matching what she has down below. So I'm going to weave this section, uh, grab my foil here lock it into place. And you guys can see I actually push that foil in and I have a lot of tension here in this hand, making sure that the foil is good and we're getting that really nice tight line down below. Um, sometimes this can be a tricky technique to master, so just keep practicing and playing around with it. Um, but really getting that lock in there is super key. Now you guys can see I'm also going through and kind of picking out again these low lights that she has in her hair. Uh, I was just telling her as we were kind of talking and I was foiling her, this would be considered a color correction because she's got so many of these like fine baby light highlights in there, but then these low lights in there as well, that this would be definitely considered a color correction. We're doing several techniques. So just so you guys know, as you're doing techniques like these on your clients, you need to be charging accordingly because this is a lot more work than a traditional highlight or even a foliage. So just be aware of that, that you are going in um, and you have expertise in this area to be able to do a technique like this. So um, make sure that you're charging accordingly. I do have a video on pricing. I will link that down below so you guys can check that out also, but definitely make sure that you're charging your worth when it comes to uh, unique services like this. And one other thing I wanna mention is too, I love using this uh, brush in particular because it has this tail comb here. This brush is from Framar. You guys will see it in a couple of my other videos as well. Um, I'll link that down below in my Amazon favorite so you guys can get that brush. It comes in like a three pack with a couple other brushes. Their brushes are my favorite and the only brushes that I use, definitely not even a sponsored post. I just love them so much. So I'll link it down in my Amazon favorites down below. So I'm just continuing down. I'm gonna go all the way into her front hairline section, finishing up this mohawk, and then we'll tackle the sides. All right, so now we've gotten to her front. Now this would be considered like her money piece area. And you guys can see she has just a little bit of breakage from previous stuff. So we're gonna be really, really gentle here. She's got a little bit of baby hairs in here as well. So what I'm gonna do is in this section, I am gonna do a lot closer together foils. I still will leave a little bit of hair out, but I do wanna have her have a little bit more of a brighter money piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep doing the same technique as what I've been uh, doing throughout the entire head, but I'm just doing my foils closer together. So I'm gonna go through, tackle this, I'll let you guys watch, and then we'll move on to the side. All right, so she's got these tiny little baby hairs right here, just more on this side. And some clients have that, you know, they have a hairline that's unique. Everybody's hairline is so unique. And that's why customizing your foil work to each client is very, very important. So I'm gonna just take this in its own little foil over here before we tackle into the sides. But this is gonna be the piece that 
um, she wears back and she told me that she wears her hair back a lot in a ponytail so we want to make sure that this is really bright and that it's really blended and so by doing these baby lights um, that you guys will see in pretty much every single one of my videos around the hairline uh, that'll really help with that too all right, so now I've kind of moved into her side area. And again, she's got all these little baby hairs, so I am gonna kind of clip this up here. Um, we don't really want to emphasize the baby hairs, but we definitely want to make sure that we are still keeping them blonde in there. So I'm just going to weave it out and again, do some little tiny, tiny baby lights in here just so that she gets that brightened. And I actually took my foils and fold them in half. And so I have these baby foils for these baby lights right here in the front. Um, these you could almost consider as like micro lights, like they're really, really fine. Um, and I, I honestly love doing them because it's like the little detail work that makes all the difference. Your clients will notice these because they will notice that they grow out so beautifully. It almost looks like there's no line of demarcation growing out. So um, I'm just gonna do a couple of these micro lights right here and then we're gonna move on into the side. All right, so now we're right around her hairline here and I'm gonna just pull this piece out of here, clip this guy away. And again, these are really, really fine baby light section because these are baby hairs and probably a smidge bit of breakage. So we wanna make sure that again, this is really subtle because this is going to be the piece that does lay back away from her face. And if these are chunky, your clients will notice them. You do not want to have this be a, an issue with your clients. So having really uh, baby lights are really important in here. And it allows you to get closer in there and just more detailed. So super, super important. So I'm gonna do a couple of these back to back right here, or not back to back. I'll leave a little bit of hair out in between, but um, we're gonna do them pretty close just because again, this is kind of considered her money piece area as well. I'm going to do just a few baby lights through here. You guys can see she's got a little bit more depth through here because again, this is kind of now in that back section. So I'm just gonna do some diagonal backs, maybe like four or five, not a ton because I do wanna leave some depth in here as we drag down her natural color. All right, so I'm going to mix up her in-between color. So I'm gonna be using 6NB 5N equal parts from Shade ZQ. So I'm gonna do about just a little over three quarters of an ounce each one. So it'll be one and a half ounces total. And then I'm gonna do one and a half ounces of our thicker gloss to gel developer. Um, I like this developer, especially for doing root shadows, things like that. Um, or in between color because it helps kind of keep the color where I want it to be. So just thickens it up a little bit. So we'll have three ounces total and we'll go apply this. All right, so now that I've completed all of her foils, I'm actually going to go in between these foils and just drag down her natural color a little bit to kind of break up this line of demarcation. Now, I'm not too worried about doing anything in the foliage section because we already know that that didn't really have any highlights going on, but I am gonna start here where I started with our foils, and I am gonna take just kind of a smaller foil. I just tore some of my pink ones in half, and I'm going to drag it down. Normally, up at the top, we don't have to do this, but I'm gonna just drag down her natural color just to kind of, again, soften that line a little bit. And what I'm also gonna do to make sure that we don't have any lines that happen here is I'm going to take our blending agent once again and just kind of soften that right in there too. So I'm just gonna continue up the head doing this and I'm not too worried about um, getting all of these foils just kind of laid on top of each other. This is just gonna be um, really easy to kind of keep it clean for me. So I'm just gonna take my foil and uh, this is just more so separating the hair of anything. Um, but that's why I like to use these little baby foils because they will help so that I'm not like laying color on top of freshly done hair. So I'm just gonna keep working up our head. I'll show you guys when I get around closer to the top and we'll go from there. 
All right, so I've gotten up to here. Now some of them you guys can see that I'm just going to barely just soften that line of demarcation and not really drag it down too much. This one I am gonna drag down a little bit more so that's why I'm using this foil just to kind of separate the hair here. Um, so it totally depends, but what you wanna create is variance. So I'm going to drag some further down because that would be more of a balayage look. And then others, I'm just gonna barely soften what she already has going so I don't even really need to use a foil. But this whole process is really just softening that natural line of demarcation that she had going on so right here just gonna barely soften it right there at the top I'm not gonna drag it down too far because I do want to still make sure that she still has a lot of blonde still in there so um, this is just kind of again figuring things out over the years that have worked for me and uh, you know figuring out what maybe doesn't work so the reason why this foil thing came about was because I found that I was like actually getting spots that were harder to apply so adding a little foil in there just to kind of separate things and keeping my work as clean as possible. So this one I'm gonna drag it down further, um, getting in that blending agent right in there. And then the next one I probably won't drag down quite as much, so yeah. All right, so we finished through the top, we did the sides, and I'm just kind of finishing up this side. You guys can still see she still has a pretty strong line of demarcation even through the sides. Some clients will, some clients won't. It just depends on the previous uh, you know, highlight application and more so how solid it was. So not necessarily like the application itself, but how, um, how many highlights they had. So I'm just going through, I actually am applying this on a foil just to make it a little bit easier. And then again, blurring it down and just kind of holding these guys up and going through the sides just to kind of blur that uh, line of demarcation out a little bit more. So I decided to do one more technique in her hair just because she has so much of this low light still happening in there. And what I don't want to happen is we do all this work and it still looks like a highlight because her ends are still so um, dimensional. And obviously with the balayage, we know that the ends usually are a little bit lighter all throughout. Um, so I still will leave some dimension. I don't want it to be an ombre, but I'm going through and just kind of taking out some of these low lights up in here. And again, I'm not gonna be able to get every single highlight out of here, but I'm gonna try my best. And I'm just gonna kind of tease this up. Now I'm trying not to disturb anything else that I've done up above. So this is just gonna be kind of just tipping out some of the ends. And I'm gonna go through and just kind of lighten these out. Still gonna use my blending agent, so almost going back to our foliage technique. And I'm just am using like a 28 volume at this point. Um, just a little bit higher than 25, but not quite 30. So a little splash of 20 in there. And I'm just gonna go through and tip out some of her pieces. Um, again, not trying to disturb anything else above, but just to give her just a smidgy bit of brightness through some of these ends. All right, so these are the final foils. We've got so much happening, like three or four different techniques in there. We're gonna do another one at the bowl. So lots of stuff happening in this, but I want you guys to know that this whole application took me just over two hours um, without an assistant, but just for you guys feeling like, oh, I'm kind of slow or whatever, you're definitely not slow. This kind of stuff takes time. And I also want you guys to know too, again, like I said, you should be charging your worth for this kind of foil work because there's a lot of stuff that goes into this process. So we went through, we applied Olaplex number two, then we rinsed it out, and now we're actually back at the chair because I'm going to apply her root shadow and it's just a little bit easier to A, show on camera, and B, it's easier for me to actually apply her root shadow. So what I'm doing is I'm just going through and her root shadow formula that I mixed up is the exact same formula that I mixed up for her in-between foil colors. So it's just the 6N, 6NB, excuse me, and the 5N Shades EQ. So I'm just applying this um, just about an inch down and then I'm gonna use my wow comb. You guys, I also have this linked in my Amazon favorites as well to kind of drag down and blur the color. But what I love about this is, is it doesn't get the color down into the hair that we don't want the color on. It just kind of blurs it all together. So I'm working my way up through this back section and then I'll work uh, through the front. But what I've discovered when I apply a root shadow is it's actually better to work your way up the head rather than trying to start at the top and work your way down. Um, you can end up with a lot of spottiness. And again, this is just trial and error of me trying this stuff. I've learned it the hard way. So I'm applying it kind of working my way down. I will kind of open up this section to make sure that I 
fully saturated it in there and making sure that it is all the way through there. But working my way down the head versus working my way up the head like I traditionally would. Um, and again, just trial and error, or I should say, working my way down the head, not up. You guys know what I mean. Anyways, so um, I'm just gonna keep working through this section and then I'm gonna get to the front. So I sectioned out her front money piece section and just clipped it away so it's not in our way. Then I'm taking a clean uh, comb here and just kind of combing this away from that money piece section. And all I'm doing is kind of just tapping in that root shadow just kind of right around where we already had it. And this is just going to help me uh, start this section off, keeping it nice and clean. And then I'm just working, like I said, my way up the head kind of from this bottom section and then I'm gonna go through and comb it through with that wow comb. So these are, again, just little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way doing root shadows and having them get all messed up. So I hope that it helps you figure out a way so that your root shadows don't get all spotty and messed up either. All right, so we finished applying it to the rest of her head and I'm just gonna do this little money piece. Uh, this has been sitting on for probably about maybe eight minutes here in the back, five minutes here in the front. So I'm just gonna apply this foil right here. And this just allows me to be able to pull the hair back without it getting squished on the other color. So I'm going to just go in here and usually I kind of just separate the top from the bottom, um, leave that out. And I just kind of take like diagonal back sections and just kind of work my way back through this front area but the key is getting it really really clean because I just want to barely kind of tap her roots here I don't want to drag it down too much and again that's another reason why we use this little foil so just keeping it as clean as possible and obviously she's gonna have little baby hairs that kind of get stuck in there and stuff what can you do that's pretty much life but um, you know trying to keep it as just as clean and as tidy as possible And this is going to sit on for just about five, three to five minutes, and then we'll rinse it out. All right, so now after I've shampooed her, I am going to add in the Color Care Acidic Milk Rinse, and this is how it's supposed to be used. So I'm going to apply it over her towel dried hair, and then we'll probably follow up with a little bit of a conditioner, but this is going to help kind of close down the pH of the hair and just really solidify everything. I like to do this after any color service, but specifically any color service that I did lightening in. So any blonding or stuff like that, foliage, I like to kind of seal this off. It makes the hair so soft and it really makes a difference you guys will notice it the second you put it on so we're gonna let this sit in for about 10 minutes and then we'll finish off with a conditioner all right and here is our final result you guys can see it's so beautiful so blended and oh, oh my gosh I'm obsessed with how it turned out I think it looks so gorgeous and you guys can just see we have so much brightness on the ends but then also some dimension still throughout it looks so gorgeous and I think this is gonna grow out so beautifully for her so this is an amazing technique for those clients who just need something a little bit lower maintenance or they're wanting to get rid of the highlight look, update it to something a bit more modern. I loved using this technique and you guys can see how the foliage and the baby lights with the root shadow completely complemented each other. And I really hope you guys try out this technique. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the whole color process. Like I said, it was a big transformation, even though it may not have looked that way when she walked in. And again, this is why I point out that you need to be charging your worth. You need to be valuing your services, making sure to book enough time because Services like this are basically color corrections, yet they don't look like it. So this entire service took me about five hours, about two hours to apply. So I always wanna share that with you guys because I want you guys to know that these kind of things take me time too, and you shouldn't be scared or intimidated if things like that take you time because you're literally going through every single hair, picking it out, uh, lightening it or darkening it, and so it does take time and to not stress over it. 
But I really hope that you guys learned something from this video. I know that it was a little bit longer, but I want to know in the comments, what was the favorite technique that I used in this video? If it was it the foliage, was it the baby lights, was it the uh, root shadow, was it maybe blurring the darker color in, was it maybe tipping out the ends? Share with me your favorite thing that you learned in this video in the comments below. I love hearing that stuff. And I also want you guys to do me another favor. I'd love if you guys would come over to Instagram and send me a DM letting me know what you thought of this video, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, and if you want to learn more things like this. I love hearing from you guys, seeing where you're watching in from, so it means the world to me if you would come over to Instagram and just say hi. Last but not least, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button below, do so now. I do lots and lots of videos like this, and I want to make sure that you're not missing out. The best way to do that is by hitting the subscribe button, and there's a little bell next to it, and that'll actually notify you when I post a new video, because every week we're posting new videos videos and you don't want to miss out on all the free education that we have for you. One other thing that I want to mention is I did do her haircut in a separate video. I will link that down below. So go to check that out if you want to see how we did her haircut. I gave her a lot more layers, shagged her up a little bit. So go ahead and check that video out down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you guys next time.